You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener. Green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. Hey, and this is Ken and Lisa Waters Lane in the studios. Lisa comes each week with your garden question. Just what are other gardeners talking about? So Lisa comes and just kind of shares that with us. Welcome back to the studio, Lisa. Thank you. Yeah, so how's it been going out there in the at the garden center? Is it uh, busy? <laughs> a little slow. A little slow. So it's, it's, I, mean, it's... I feel like the Maytag repairman. <laughs> Come talk to me. Come talk to me. Well, it's kind of because we're, we are seasonal, but yeah. the tomato gardeners, they're not they're not there. The annual gardeners, the it's just trees, mm-hmm. house plants, getting gardens ready. We're selling lots of mulch lots. and manures. Oh my gosh, tons of that. Lots of fertilizer, mm-hmm. but not all the departments are powered up. So we're in between cycles for fruit trees. So mm-hmm. that they'll be coming in what, usually January, February yeah, is when February. we start restocking for right. the spring fruit trees so mm-hmm. right now it's maples and evergreens so you're you're running at like 30 percent levels <laughs> just because all the inventory isn't there so anyway that's, yeah. that's normal that's oh, the no, same it's okay I'm, I'm i'm used to it yeah i've been there and done that but yeah if you ever wanted to talk to a gardener this is the time landscape provides, now is the time <laughs> that's right we're looking for things to do so and we can spend more time with you, which is great, oh, especially yeah. if you need design ideas, right. that kind of stuff. It's I notice a lot of people are coming in and they're not buying, they're having a house built. Right. And they're yeah. recon, it's researching yeah. what they can do, when they can do it. And so they're doing their homework. Mm-hmm. And you can tell and they're chit-chatty. Some of them are chit-chatty, some of them are like, I'm just looking. <laughs> don't don't bother me. Look at the hand. There's there's two of those. We're, we're, we weren't trying to sell your duty. We realize you're not ready for this stuff, sure. but sure. Uh, just trying to help. So oh, yeah. anyway. Good time to ask questions and see what's out there. So what are some of the questions sure. that are being asked that are out there? So Pam is in Prescott. She has a question. She has three five-year-old Austrian pines. Okay. Uh, and all three, the needles are kind of yellowy, browning out towards the trunk, center of the tree. Okay. And uh, oh. she's noticed others in the neighborhood doing the same thing. She yeah. just wants to know, is this... Uh, something going on is it a problem or concern or is this natural for the time of year so whenever you see <clears throat> yellowing or discoloration on your plants you should be worried but but not so much in the autumn what happens in the autumn so you're seeing a lot of fall color mm-hmm. from your deciduous trees deciduous is it loses their leaves mm-hmm. the evergreens all although they can also show some fall color some of them broadleaf evergreens actually turn from green to purples and grays mm-hmm. and have tinges of yellow or or orange or, or reds like a nandina i'm thinking of or heavenly bamboo sure. if it's out in full sun this is an evergreen plant but if it's out in full sun it turns bright red it doesn't lose its leaves it holds that leaf so it's ever evergreen or ever foliage but it's not evergreen because it turns colors from green to red <laughs> then back from red to green so you're seeing some of this. Well, some of your pine trees, your conifers, things that have needles for foliage, they also will have this coloration. And so mainly what happens is, um, let's say a Colorado spruce, or in this case, an Austrian pine or scotch pine or mm-hmm. fir, whatever it is, junipers, uh, they flush this new growth in spring and it looks vibrant. And it's, we're so excited. And it announces spring and it, it blocks out the neighbors and cuts the wind and does all the things we want evergreens to do. Uh, we're about to decorate them for holidays. Uh, then the daylights get longer and longer. And so now it can, it's doing the photosynthesis thing. It's growing lots of roots right afterwards. And now what's happening, the days are getting shorter and that older growth that was there last year, the year before, since, since it was, since it's youth, I mean, it's now shedding some of that. And what's happening is they, they put on a, a, a ring of, of wood. And so the bark has gotten thicker, the wood has gotten thicker and, and the needles towards the inside where the thicker bark is, it starts to shed. Or you've had so much growth that now it's shed it. The, the, the inside is, is now shaded, just can't get enough sunlight. And so now as the days get shorter, it just naturally sheds. So on the inside of a conifer, all of them, you don't see foliage. You see bark, Mm -hmm. you see structure, you see branching, you see not foliage. 
And this is a natural occurrence for all conifers. And this is the time of year that it happens. So you'll see it now through the end of the year, this cycle of shedding some, some needles, they're kind of messy sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's not a, I would, I would say, be careful. I, I hate to say, oh no, it's all fine. They've mm -hmm. got bark beetle or something, but if in doubt, take a picture, bring it in. Mm -hmm. But, but this is not concerning. Mm -hmm. It's pretty common to have your conifers shed some needles on the inside, towards the inside of the trunk area. If it's at the top or out on the outer edges, totally That's different concerned. game. That's serious. Come in and talk to us right away. You're about to lose your tree. Yeah. But on the inside, yeah, it's not that big a deal. Just get a rake, clean things up. It'll be done in a, about six weeks and all will be well. All will be well. All will be well. <laughs> That's the main thing is fertilize. Yeah. You just, I can't emphasize that enough. Fertilize, fertilize. Mm -hmm. This is the most important. My Midwest, my poor Midwest folks, they <laughs> just don't get it. I'm talking to Michigan, you folks in Minnesota, Wisconsin, Ohio. You know who you are. You've got eight foot frost line. And you just can't wrap your head around. We stop gardening. We, we, we. It's going to be all, nothing but ice, and there is no gardening to do. You can't fertilize. You can't prune now. You can't plant now. You can't because I didn't do that back in the Midwest. Right. Well, Toto, you're not in <laughs> Kansas anymore. You're out here in God's country where it's beautiful. That's why you've moved to the Sun Belt. It's so much nicer, and plants do keep. Mm -hmm using some they slow down mm -hmm. but they still use some moisture some food so, so it's important to keep fertilizing uh, this is probably the most important fertilizing of the year for lilacs persithium fruit trees and your evergreens this mm -hmm. is this is the one and then uh, keep watering a couple times a month just you sporadically think by, the, by the end of the month they should switch their watering over twice a month or do it now I, think? I think as soon as the leaves have dropped off the plants mm -hmm. that's your your the plants will tell you but if it's so, an evergreen well if it's an evergreen <laughs> let the plants that lose their leaves tell you cuz the conifers are doing the same thing yeah. that's a trick question oh, sorry. so anyway the maples are, they're starting to get done mm -hmm. Aspens are sort of done. The, the Bradford pears are just coming online. So yeah. they're looking spectacular. Yeah. So there's this progression, this, this seasonality. But definitely by the end of the month or middle of the month, mm -hmm. you're back to a couple times a month. Yeah. You're probably fine. If we get a rainstorm, you can cut one of those. A good or snowstorm. A good, a good, a good snowstorm. deep, <laughs> at least an inch of moisture mm -hmm. that delivers to our, our area. Then you could probably cut one of those out. Okay. Yeah. All right. Next question is from Lindsay. Talk about seasonality. Uh, she has several blonde ambition grasses nice. in her yard. And of course, right now they kind of have that fall look. So they're more straw-ish yeah. looking, especially blonde ambition. And she wants to know, should she cut back now or wait on this? So blonde ambition, grama grass. Mm -hmm. So let, let the readers know because she obviously knows and we know. But not everyone that's tuned in knows. Right. This is a native grass. It grows wild throughout the prairies, areas, mm -hmm. Prescott Valley, Chino, I mean, throughout the area. It's it's a short little grass, about knee high, mm -hmm. has the cutest little seed head. They're just really robust, very tough, very drought hardy, very native. Little eyelashes. Like little eyelashes. That's a mm -hmm. good way to describe it. And so we've got several in our yard. We're starting to see that straw color look mm -hmm. to it. This goes for just about all grasses. Leave them alone. Don't prune them back. Don't try to, what we do with our, all of our grasses, and we've got a lot of different varieties. We leave that up there because they've got beautiful structure, even though they are no longer those beautiful blues or greens that grasses are right. famous for. Maybe even the plume, they started to fade or drop off, but you still get the straw kind of structure to it. That's very interesting. And so I'll, we'll keep those up there until we get a real heavy snow. And once, usually by the middle of, January, February, you get some heavy snows that starts to lay on them and then they fall over and then they don't look so good. No. Prune them back then. There, don't be in a hurry to prune, prune back your grasses. You could do it right now. It'd be perfectly fine. But why not enjoy the autumn colors that, that your grasses give you? Those plumes, that, that blonde ambition, that eyelash will stay on there for another two months easily. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so, and if you look at the base of it, it's still green at the base. Yeah. It's still rooting. You can still plant a blonde ambition gra mm -hmm. grass is now, and it would continue to root into the uh, surrounding soil. So anyway, that's how, that's what I would say. Okay. 
good questions this week. Yeah. Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners. Be right back after this. Water's October companion plants that grow well together are Blaze Maples, Spicy Mums, Glamour Kale, and Burning Bush. Water's Compact Burning Bush is a neat, well-behaved shrub prized for its blazing red foliage in the fall. Looks great when planted with autumn gold sumacs, lilacs, and gold euonymus. At six foot, this bush makes a natural hedge that burns red through autumn, all for $49. You'll find the showiest shrubs here at Waters Garden Center. Siri, give me directions to Waters Garden Center. If you enjoy this show and would like to hear more, please subscribe to The Mountain Gardener, wherever you like to listen to podcasts. And if you'd like even more garden tips, tricks, and helpful advice, please check out my website at watersgardencenter.com for classes, videos, and more or my online garden center at top10plants.com. Throughout the week, Lisa and I can be found here at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. The Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens.